In 1980, on the 10th episode of Cosmos, Carl Sagan introduced us to the idea of Flatland. He suggests we imagine a totally flat world, inhabited by totally flat creatures. They only know two dimensions, left, right, and forward, backward. They have no concept of up or down. Then, into this world, a three-dimensional object lands. He uses the example of an apple. To a flatlander, all they would see is the imprint of the apple on flatland, and to them, it would just appear out of nowhere. If that apple were to continue through that plane, the image the flatlander sees would change and warp and disappear, probably leaving it utterly confused. Similarly, we live in three dimensions, and the idea of a four-dimensional object is hard for us to imagine, and if one were to appear in front of us, we probably would have no idea what we were looking at. Now, Sagan was talking about a fourth spatial dimension, but there is a fourth dimension that we experience every single day. The dimension of time. Of course, we only experience time in one direction, but what if something didn't? What if something say, an electron, were able to travel back and forth in time. Theoretically, it's possible. And it brings up some startling ideas about the nature of reality. Akriti Singh asked, can you do a video on Feynman's one electron universe theory? The one electron universe theory is exactly what it sounds like. It's the idea that every single electron in the universe is actually one electron. Now, if that sounds crazy, it's because it is. Rule number one of this video is don't take this too seriously, it's really more of a thought experiment. It was first proposed by physicist John Archibald Wheeler in 1940 in a phone call to Richard Feynman, who later popularized the idea. Wheeler had been working on a problem that had been plaguing physicists for decades, the question of why all electrons have the exact same mass and the same spin. He considered the fact that all electrons move in a particular direction once they hit a magnetic field because of their negative charge. And similarly, a positively charged electron, called a positron, would move in the opposite direction. So he imagined that if you recorded an electron going through an electromagnetic field on video and then played that video backwards, it would look just like a positron. In other words, if an electron were traveling backwards in time, it would basically be a positron. This idea of an electron traveling back and forth in time eventually took over, and he began to imagine that if it was going back and forth in time, it would cross our timeline multiple times, which would look to us like multiple electrons. I have a feeling I'm probably losing some of you right now. I actually have a prop that could help with this. Hang on just a second. So I want you to know that I spent all of my engineering degree and a lot of time and money. So hopefully this will help out. So on this board, the vertical axis is the progression of time. And this line right here is where we are right now. This is our now line, which technically is moving upward slowly as time progresses, but let's just ignore that for now. And this is our electron path. And it's traveling forward and backwards in time. It travels one direction, and then it meets some kind of force and travels back the other direction. Maybe that force is the beginning and end of time. Maybe it's something else. But as you can see, it winds forward and backward over and over again. Let's just wrap that up right there. So what does this mean to us? Well, if you think back to that flatland analogy at the beginning of this video, you could consider us to be the flatlanders of time because we can only see across one plane right here. So even though this electron is spanning the infinite timeline of the universe infinite number of times, to us, we only see it when it crosses our path, which in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times. Now, in actuality, this would be a lot closer to, say, infinity, but I only have so much string. But the idea is we see a nearly infinite number of electrons just doing their electron thing when reality, it was one electron all along. Meaning that you and I and everyone we know and everything we can touch and every planet, star, and galaxy in the universe are made up of the exact same electron. Now, if you're wondering how Wheeler came up with such a crazy idea, it might be because he created the delayed choice experiment. Now, I talked about this way back in my double slit experiment video. But the basic gist of it, very simplified, is that the delayed choice experiment is a version of the double slit experiment that allows us to know whether or not a photon's waveform collapses before it knows it's observed. In other words, it behaves differently according to things that have not yet happened, meaning that the quantum world is not necessarily bound by time. And this might also explain why we often see particles blinking in and out of existence and crossing barriers that physically they shouldn't be able to. It's because they're actually sliding back and forth across our timeline. Now, this entire topic is pretty woo-woo, but if you'll indulge me for just a second, I'm going to veer into extreme woo-woo territory. Some people have used a similar theory to explain ghost phenomena. 
The idea being that ghosts appear and disappear at random times because it's an interaction with another dimension. Whether it's another spatial dimension or a temporal dimension, whether or not it's an actual conscious entity or just some kind of residual energy imprint, the idea is that the ghost is just sliding through our reality, just like the apple in the Flatland example. That's the theory anyway. But back to reality, there are several problems with the one electron universe theory, the main one being the missing positrons. The example I used earlier with this board left out one crucial detail, and that is that every time that the electron is moving backwards through time, it would actually appear to us as a positron. Remember, this is what led Wheeler to this idea in the first place. And that's actually the concept that Feynman ran with, the idea that antiparticles are just normal particles moving backwards through time. This actually won in the Nobel Prize. But as you can see, according to this idea, we would be seeing just as many positrons as we're seeing electrons, and that's just not the case. Not by a long shot. It goes back to the big question of why don't we see more antimatter in the universe. Now Wheeler did suggest in an interview one time that maybe the missing positrons were actually hiding in protons in the nucleus of atoms, but most people think that he was just joking when he said that. He didn't really seem to take that seriously. So the idea that one electron has spanned the entire timeline of the universe infinite number of times isn't very likely, but it's a lot of fun to think about. In fact, the website io9 crunched some numbers to see just how old an electron would be after crossing the universe's timeline so many times, and the number that they came up with was 10 to the power of 105 years. That's 10,000 Google years old. For context, the universe itself is only 14 to the power of nine years old. So that would make all of us pretty ancient indeed. This, of course, just touches on the surface of the One Electron Universe Theory. I'll link to a video from PBS Space Time where they get totally in the weeds about it for all the super nerds out there. And, of course, I'll put some links in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big special shout-out to The Answer Files on Patreon, which, by the way, I just checked. We hit 200 patrons. I am blown away by this. Thank you guys so much. I do have some new people I want to call out real quick. There's a lot of them. Shane Sheehan, Luciano Rosario, Clinton Dela Cruz, Captive Plum, David Rapsch, Will Tudor Evans, Mike Hardy, Jennifer DeRoche, Budjarn Lambeth, Micah, Ask a Snowman, uh, Skydiving Stormtrooper, awesome name, Mitch Miller, and William Schultes. Wow, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get access to secret vlogs and other kind of cool perks, outtakes, and that kind of thing, uh, amongst just my general awesome personality, whatever, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. And as always, this shirt and many others just as awesome are available at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. They make great holiday presents, just saying. And you've heard me talk about this before, but if you get regular canker sores and mouth ulcers, it's time to fix your mouth. You can go to cankerboy.com, sign up for a risk-free two-month trial of a pill that you take every day. It helps prevent them. It works. It's helped out a lot of people. It could help you too. Go check it out, cankerboy.com. All right, like and share if you liked it. And if you found this interesting and it's your first time here, I invite you to subscribe or at least check out this video or any of the others on the thing over here. If you're on your computer, if it's on your phone, then I'm just pointing off to the side of your phone for no reason. And if you like it, please subscribe. I come back with videos just like this every Monday. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.